Tonight in Look East, the age of eastern region's electrification. British Rail announced a £60 million modernisation scheme for the high-speed 80s. Project manager Mike Fuchs. Electrification is cheaper to operate and cheaper to maintain, which means reduced cost as far as the board is concerned. As far as the passenger is concerned, electrification with resignalling means greater reliability. It means cleaner, more comfortable, quieter trains, and in some cases, speed improvements. The first job with any electrification scheme is to bring the track up to date. This means doing away with unwanted sidings and points and generally simplifying the layout. Finally, the lines are stretched and welded by heat fusion into one long continuous length for a noiseless and comfortable ride. Many of the bridges on the line to Norwich and Harwich have remained unaltered since they were built in the 1840s. Some are too low for the overhead line equipment and over 50 are being rebuilt. Rebuilding a bridge, or in fact building a new one, for that's what it is, takes time, anything up to a year. It's important that road traffic isn't held up, so one method is to demolish and build one half a bridge at a time. Rail traffic mustn't be inconvenienced either. When it's not possible to demolish and rebuild in this way, the whole bridge has to go in one, and a temporary bridge is put up for road traffic. Whoa, whoa. The new bridges have been designed to blend in with the surrounding countryside. Arch and deck beams replace the old method of building with brick arches. Many bridges carry services, gas, electricity, water and communications. These have to be temporarily rerouted while new pipes and cables are built into the bridge structure. And this often prolongs the job of building the bridge. As well as road bridges, there are footbridges and farm access bridges to be replaced and they're made as attractive as possible within the budget limits. Ipswich Tunnel posed one of the more difficult engineering problems on this line. It was built in 1846. It is unusual in that it's curved throughout its 330 metre length. The old method of rails on sleepers was discarded in favour of slab track. This is a concrete slab which holds the track rigid in the narrow tunnel and is a good example of 20th century technology in a 19th century structure.
Underground springs have always caused the tunnel to leak badly. The shield of fiberglass has been designed to protect the overhead equipment and reduce rail corrosion. East Anglia is the land of level crossings. Manual crossings are slowly being replaced by automatic gates, activated by the train. A few are operated from signal boxes with closed circuit television, enabling the signalman to see what's happening. This modern box at Colchester is also the centre for the new signalling system. It will eventually control the whole line from Shenfield to Norwich, as well as the Harwich branch. It will replace the old system of manually operated signal boxes, which have given faithful service for over a century. At the turn of the century, the lines out of Liverpool Street carried the most intensive steam-hauled commuter services in the world. The Great Eastern Railway began electrifying the suburban lines out of the terminus in 1935. The Second World War brought work to a halt, but progress was resumed after 1945, and the overhead wires had reached as far as Shenfield four years later. The branch line from Colchester was electrified in 1959. The gap between Shenfield and Colchester was closed in two stages, completed in 1956 and 1962. Steam locomotives were the workhorses of the railway for over a hundred years. In the late 1950s, diesel electrics were introduced, and within five years, steam had gone. East Anglia is a growth region. Both passenger and freight traffic are increasing, particularly with the expansion of the docks at Felixstowe and Harwich. In 1983, 63 million pounds were found within British Rail's own resources to electrify the line from Colchester to Norwich and the branch to Harwich. We've got nine minutes approaching Norwich, total of 15. Um, then on Saturdays accepted, we've got the additional 15 minutes approaching... One of the first tasks before putting up the overhead equipment is temporarily to rearrange the timetable, so that work trains can get onto the tracks without disturbing the passenger and freight services. The cost of carrying out electrification at weekends only would be prohibitive, and the job would take 15 years. Once the schedule has been agreed, the first work train appears, the excavating and concreting train to make the foundations for the masts. The self-propelled excavator digs holes varying in depth between 1.6 and 5 metres. A polystyrene core former is then placed into the centre of the hole to provide a position for the steel mast, and concrete is poured in. The concrete foundations are left to cure for about three weeks. Then the polystyrene core former is dissolved by use of the chemical xylene. The erection of masts has to be carried out on this line on a Saturday night, when there are no passenger trains booked between Colchester and Norwich. It's the only time when a crane and wagons carrying materials can work on both tracks at once.
The next job is for a gang, normally on day shift, to align the masts correctly. Wedges are hammered in until the mast is at the correct rake. They usually lean backwards slightly to allow for the weight of the overhead equipment. Now that the masts are correctly set up, they can be permanently fixed in the foundations. This is done by what is called the grouting train. A special mixture of sand, cement and water is pumped into the core hole. The concrete mixture forces out any rainwater. Later, when the grouting mixture has hardened, the wedges are removed and the mast becomes self-supporting. The first wire to go up is the aluminium return conductor. This is run out on pulleys at the rear of each mast and clamped into the insulators. Then the cantilever frames are put up to support the overhead wires. Um, next item on the agenda then is um, item two, review of overall programme of work. On the Ipswich Norwich resignalling, these were the dates that were more or less agreed at the Norwich meeting. Did we do anything yesterday? So, because you had a meeting yesterday about yes. Trous. We had a good day talking about the Norwich area and Trous in particular. And we managed to get a, a firm date for the commissioning of the Swing Bridge, which will be the weekend of 15th of February, 1987. What about the Harwich branch dates? Are they still the same, Colin? At the moment? Well, they're currently on target for all the dates quoted here. Um, the doubtful one, if any, is uh, running three to Falkston Goods, but I'm um, still confident we've got time to catch up on that one at this stage. Good. Modern electrification requires two wires above the track, both of which are conductors. The first of these to be run out is the catenary wire, which is a support cable for the main contact wire. The contact wire, the solid copper cable, is run out in the same way. Temporary ties hold the wire in place, then after tensioning, the contact wire is clipped into droppers suspended from the catenary. The next stage is to register the wire. This means that it has to be set at the right height and correct alignment relative to the centre line of the track. The registration gang use a height and stagger gauge to make sure that the contact wire stays within the parameters of the pantograph. last process before the current can be switched on is to inspect the overhead line from the top of the pantograph train. It's during this final check that any minor adjustments can be carried out. This slide here I want you to pay particular attention to. Here we have a piece of rope or wire which has been thrown over the overhead line. Under no circumstances whatsoever do you try and retrieve that. Report it to the electrical control room operator. He, in turn, will get one of the AME staff out to either retrieve that with special tools or take it down via isolation. Also with this, icicles are another one that we've spoken about earlier on. If you see icicles hanging, you don't touch those or try and knock them off. The power for an electrified railway comes from the national grid and is transformed down from 132,000 to 25,000 volts and is fed to the overhead line system via feeder stations. OK. Now you've got double yellows coming up here now. So what you want to do is bring the speed of your train down. OK? Yeah. See, so watch. Drop your brake pipe to about 60 and you can see there that your, uh, your Rio brake application's coming on. You can see all your amp gauges all coming up and you can see the amount of power that's going down to your, uh, for the operation of your Rio brake. Well, right, fellas, Monday's three days away, three working days. 
I think we should go through the schedule, see where we are on switching. Uh, earth. I know the section looks at what we are amiss ready for Monday's switch on. We've got one or two corrections that we need to make on the master. Let's go to the roof bushings at Manning Tree, sub MA391392 that feed the branch. Romford Control here. Confirm VCB MA343 is now closed. Would you test the riser from circuit breaker MA343 up line and confirm this is alive? Over. Will do, Don. Over. We're coming on now. Over. That's alive. Test 36 is completed and section 342 is alive. It is particularly appropriate that this splendid engine should be given so fine a name. For its daily journeys, will be to those counties from which for 300 years have come soldiers who have made the British infantry respected all over the world. As Colonel-in-Chief of the regiment, which has inherited these proud traditions, it now gives me great pleasure to name this locomotive the Royal Anglican Regiment. British Rail's huge investment in East Anglia will bring lower running costs and cleaner, quieter, more comfortable trains. Journey times will be reduced. With the introduction of 100 mile an hour trains, the journey from Norwich to London will take one hour, 40 minutes. Electrification provides a modern railway for the future, faster, more efficient and more reliable. <laughs>